Hello fellow YouTubians! How is it going today? Finally got everything up and going! I have a couple videos coming out for you guys. But today, I know it's kind of late, but I actually want to talk to you about WWDC. But this isn't going to be one of those videos that is talking about like what came out and all that crap. A little bit's going to be in there, but more so it's going to be about my opinions on the matter. So let's get started. This is the Techie Jess. Pros and cons time! Bruh. Segment on the event and new pretty releases. Pretty is what Techie Jess calls all of her Apple products or just shiny things in general. I think we can pretty much say that the biggest thing coming out of that event was not iOS 6, was not another new cap based <coughs> operating system, but it was the new MacBook Pro, or should I say the Retina, Retina. 15 inch MacBook Pro. And this notebook, guys, looks freaking crazy, or at least Apple made it seem it looked crazy. I got all caught up in Apple's hype and everything that was going on with it. I watched the whole entire keynote, and through that whole thing, I was like so pumped for this computer. But a few hours after, and I started realizing it popping up, you know, on apple.ca, apple.com, all that, and I was looking at the specs and the internals of it, I kind of got a little skeptical. So, guess what? I have beef with it. That's right, I'm different. Guess you weren't expecting that, Batman. Ziz. I am a very strong believer that a laptop is meant for your lap. You know, like when you're chilling on the couch and you're just browsing YouTubes or the internet or anything like that. That is my personal need for a laptop. Now I know I'm gonna get some of these people that are all like, Nicky Jesh, it's not a laptop. It's a notebook. It's called a bloody notebook. But when we first saw these types of computers, they were originally called laptops. And many people today still refer to them as a laptop. Why? Because at the time, they were meant to sit on your lap. Until they figured out that, you know what? The laptop sitting on your lap probably isn't the best idea, unless you have something underneath it, because you're freaking computer is going to overheat and explode and you're going to be pissed off because you're going to have to buy a new one. So that's why they switched it to the notebook. Little history there for y'all. This is my opinion, guys, so if you have an issue with it, that's fine. But it's mine. I have a right to my own thoughts and my own noodle. And in my personal opinion, why the deuce do people still use, and a lot of people on YouTube in general, a 15-inch MacBook Pro, a 13-inch, or even a 17-inch, but 17 inches have been discontinued, if you did not know that. They have died. Why do they use laptops as their main system when editing or doing graphic design? This is all budgeting reasons aside. I mean, I understand students that need a laptop for when they're on the go and they don't have the cash to put towards an iMac or a Hackintosh or anything that is a desktop computer because they are expensive. Macs in general are expensive. So I understand where they are coming from in that whole entire section of computing. But if you are a serious film editor, a graphic designer, or just a power whore in general, why not buy the top of the line 27 inch iMac? It is going to be way less than the new Retina MacBook Pro and it will give you more use out of it while you're at home. You have bigger real estate, it doesn't rev like the MacBook Pro does when you are editing and I have been there, I have had first hand experience with this. Those computers just aren't meant for the editing that I do and for what I'm sure what professionals do. But I see this all over YouTube and I want to literally shake people. You get more bang for your buck with the iMac if you need a computer with tons of power. The fans don't rev, you have a bigger screen so bigger workspace, you have a bigger hard drive that is included so you don't really have to replace that right away. You can upgrade RAM, which again I'll get to in a minute with my complaints. Apple it is just something I find incredibly annoying. And don't get me wrong, notebooks are great for when you're on the go and when you need something to produce film. It's just going to be a little bit slower from my experience and it's not going to be as easy of an experience because you don't have a large screen really to work on. But some people are used to that. This is why I also understand you need a powerful processor to be able to put out content for people. But I am pretty sure one, as in one person, does not need a display that has 1080p in almost a fourth of a 15 inch screen. Why would one need this? The previous screen was pretty much flawless. You could not see pixels. Our eye can only see so freaking much, people. So to me and to anybody else that pretty much has eyes, I am pretty sure that the previous MacBook Pro generation was plenty of enough screen sexiness for them. And if you are unaware of what my mouth is, is speaking of it, the new Retina display is 2880 by 1800 of sexy pixels. That is just insane to me. I can't fathom why someone would need that much real estate 
in such a little freaking screen. But I am a nerd or a geek or whatever you want to call it. So yes, when I heard Apple talking about this, I wanted to run out and buy one immediately. But for $2,200? Are you freaking kidding me, dude? You're joking, right? That's crazy. I guess what I'm getting at is why would they keep the previous Pro models, just give them a special speed bump and keep them at the same price point as what they were and then charge what would be a small child or an iPad, I guess, equivalent for the newer model. They are practically unattainable already at the previous price point and now they've raised it even higher. Like seriously, you'd have to like sell a kidney to even be able to put out that cash when you're a student like myself. And on top of all of that, it only comes with the base model equivalent. Unless you pay through Apple. The previous MacBook Pros, you could update your RAM, you could add an SSD, you could even take out the disk drive and add two drives in so you have more freaking storage for all the goodies that you're producing with your computer. And for people that are filmmakers and are graphic designers and need that on the go, this is a perfect solution for them because not only was it portable, they could add the needed space they wanted or they could speed up their computer and add an SSD, configure the RAM with this new computer. Guess what? Guys, the RAM is even freaking soldered to the logic board. The batteries are glued down and there's no disk drive, so you can't switch out your hard drive and I'm pretty sure the hard drive is soldered, if not glued down as well. So you have to pay Apple another 600 to over two grand for the updated specs you want in that computer because as soon as they solder those bad boys on there, you are done and you cannot change out anything. Which means if I were to buy one and I would have to directly go through Apple because I usually go through Best Buy. I put out a Best Buy credit card and I pay it off gradually because these computers aren't cheap, dude. And that is a great option for me and for students in general or people that just are running low on cash. This all means too, this is what my machine would look like in terms of pricing and specs and whatnot. So, <gasps> yeah. And that's before tax. So you have to buy all of the specs and everything in your laptop directly from Apple, which means that you are gonna be spending a crap load more money than you need to. A crap load more. This also means that people can't go to a third party seller or a retailer like Best Buy, Future Shop, and buy the computer that they have. You can only buy the two models, so the base model and the upped model. But if you wanted better specs than the upped model, you can't do that because Apple does not allow Best Buy to fully customize computers that is only available through Apple, which means people like myself would have to deal with what comes in it standard and not be able to upgrade as I go so it's cheaper for myself or for other people. Now it is different in the States than it is here in terms of payment plans through Apple. Here we do have one, but it's only a three month payment plan and I think you have to pay a third each month so you don't pay at the end of it. It is horrendous. It's a horrible idea what they are doing. I understand that for some people this will work out, but for many it will not, especially if your computer is going to run you over four grand. I understand why they killed off the 17 inch model. Like, I mean, that thing was a boat or an anchor that could sink a boat. Either way, it was huge and I understand why Apple discontinued it because not many people were buying it. And when it comes to the laptop world, my personal preference, I like a 13 inch laptop. It's small enough to fit in my bag. It has a big enough screen that I can do what I may with it and it would be at a price point that people could probably afford. I mean, I would be happy with a 13 inch retina display model that was at the price point maybe a little bit lower than what the 15 inch model is now. The original 15 inch pro, I mean. And I get it. Oh, the power and the possibility and all the freaking naked women in beyond HD quality. I understand. But come on, man. Whose side are you on, Apple? These computers are freaking unattainable. Not to mention, once you have one, you can't upgrade it. So you have to pretty much sell a child or a kidney or something of value to even make a dent in buying one of these bad boys. Either that or you could just be loaded and then yeah that's you know self-explanatory. And I'm also kind of disappointed that they didn't upgrade the new iMac line. I was hoping they would. It was really rumored that they were going to upgrade it and they didn't. So now I'm stuck with the previous generation. Not that that's a bad thing because it is the current generation but I was hoping for a newer upgraded pretty iMac. I have been looking into buying an iMac for some time now and I was going to get one back in like March but I waited because I figured oh the new Apple event is coming up soon there's gonna be new updated iMacs no problem I'll just get that one it makes more sense and then I got here I waited and I waited and I waited and they didn't have any me 
They pretty much got nada in the Apple desktop portion of the event, or just lineup in general. Well, we did get the Mac Pro, but I mean, we can't count that. That's not even fair. <laughs> We did get a nice speed bump with the MacBook Air, which was really nice to see. And I like that Apple kept the previous generation MacBook Pros just because the new one is completely overpriced, in my opinion. Or just at a price point that is just, it's just, it's hard for me to even justify it. The base model alone, if my computer was spec'd out, I would pay that. But because it's not at a level that I personally would be okay with, it's not good enough for me at this time. But overall, I can say I was pretty disappointed with this whole entire WWDC thing. I was really hoping for a new iMac. I was hoping for a 13-inch Retina display model and that did not happen. So what do you guys think about this? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What is your opinion on the whole entire event? Let me know down below. Don't forget to smack that like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, folks, baby dabba dooba dabba punch a camera.